Hi, sweet friends. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today, I am very excited to be sharing our vintage farmhouse dining room makeover with you. We have been working on this dining room for quite some time now. We've had some big projects. We have been finding the right pieces of furniture and we've finally seen this room come together and we are so, so happy and thankful to have a space to gather and eat as a family. So if you're excited to see this space today, give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. And before we move on, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Globe Inn. Globe Inn is a monthly subscription of fair trade goods from all around the world. Each artisan box is curated and it's a theme collection of handmade items for your home. Every month, Globe Inn has four to five brand new box themes and you can choose one of these as your monthly selection. They also make available many of their previous bestsellers. So if you don't like any of the new themes, you still have plenty of options and you can build your collection of all of the artisan boxes. I had such a hard time choosing which artisan box I wanted for my home, but I decided on the decadence box because I had my eye on the beautiful Art Deco gold metallic apron from Morocco. It looks so beautiful displayed here in my dining room. Also, this gold accent serving bowl has perfect imperfections. As you can see, the beautiful handmade details. I love that these pieces are super unique. And I'm someone that loves beauty and function. So this ceramic Dutch oven from Nepal is a perfect addition to my open shelves. It's gorgeous on display, but also super functional if I wanna cook something up that needs to simmer for a long time. Every single purchase supports artisans and remote communities, and Globe Inn is a certified member of the Fair Trade Federation, which basically means they pay artisans a reliable wage, which covers all of their basic needs. Globe Inn is a monthly subscription, which costs $40 per month. However, if you pay in advance for the year, this can come down to $33 per month, and you can skip a box or cancel anytime. If you're interested in adding beautiful, unique pieces to your own home, be sure to check out the link in my description for a coupon code to sign up for a subscription today. And thanks again, Globin, for sponsoring today's video. Now, if you're new around here, we purchased this home back in January and our home was built in the late 1800s. And with that came a lot of fun surprises behind some of these walls. <laughs> um, when we first moved in this room, there was a chair railing around the entire space and the bottom half was sort of a dark gray and what looked like textured plaster walls. And then the top half was fairly smooth and was like a light gray color. Now come to find out it was just painted wallpaper and there are so many layers of wallpaper in this house, which is super normal in an old home. Um, but we knew right away we wanted to do something with the walls and we didn't want to just drywall over them because that is messy and time consuming. We ended up having to do a drywall project later down the road, which is funny to think about now in the grand scheme of things. But regardless, we ended up shiplapping this space and we really, really love it. I was on the fence about it, but when I really look at style that I gravitate towards, it is cozy, it is timeless, and it just adds a fun interest to the space without being too busy. So. We really, really love the shiplap and we were able to do a crown molding around the edges of the room, which adds a ton of character and warmth and it is a really, really beautiful detail. Another huge renovation in this space was removing the wall between the kitchen and the dining room. Now we included that in the kitchen renovation video, so if you missed that, go check it out. But we did take out a wall, we added a large peninsula to the kitchen, and that really created an open concept area between the kitchen and the dining room. And it let in so much natural light into the dining room, and I'm so thankful that we did that. So once the wall came down, 
down. We shiplapped the walls in the dining room to cover that plaster and that wallpaper, trimmed out the ceiling with crown molding. The space was really coming together. We also replaced the floors in the dining room um, as well as the rest of the main living. We went with a wide plank antique pine LVP that is really, really beautiful. Um, but once we did all of that, we were left with one more project that we needed to tackle and that was the original chimney. I so wished that when we kind of tore off the plaster that the chimney was exposed brick, but unfortunately it wasn't. It was just like a smooth stone concrete and it wasn't in the best shape. So we knew we had to cover it. And so what I did was a DIY faux brick. I used brick panel board. You can get it at the hardware store. It's super inexpensive. And then I just slapped on some joint compound with a spatula, let it dry, and lo and behold, it looks like beautiful antique brick. So that was a really fun project and a really cool way to add some character and depth to the space. When you walk through the living room, coming into the dining room, that chimney is the first thing you see and it is such a beautiful focal point in this space. Now, as far as some of the furniture and decor in the space, we have a beautiful reclaimed pine dining table that is just the perfect color. It's not too dark, it's not too gray. I love it. I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace a few years ago now, maybe four or five years ago. And with that, I just did black Windsor chairs. I love that classic timeless look. And I always wanted some captain's chairs on either end just to just give some more texture and some interest to the space. I really, really wanted to find wicker chairs. And I even looked in outdoor sections at different stores, trying to find the perfect thing. Ended up finding something online that worked really well for the space. And just to kind of break up some of that wicker, I've added some floral accent pillows just with a nice soft touch of blue. As far as vintage touches go, I really wanted to find a vintage buffet table for the space. And I started looking and looking. I looked online, I looked in antique shops, but I did find one on Facebook Marketplace. And it was this gorgeous kind of Victorian style buffet with these big chunky legs. And it was in a mahogany color, very similar to all of the wood trim I have in my living room and my staircase. And so when I saw it, I sort of had this light bulb epiphany. Bought the buffet and I painted the body Tricorn Black by Sharon Williams, which just sort of tied in with my chairs and the light mixture and sort of those black accents I had going on. However, I left the legs that exposed mahogany stain to sort of tie in the stairs into the dining room as well since there's a lot of white going on and it just really works at first i wasn't sure but i really have come to love it and it's cool to see the wood tones be cohesive and just sort of blend together the main reason i wanted a buffet was to have lamps because i think that they create really beautiful cozy ambiance lighting and i love decorating buffet tables i think that they are so clean and classic and timeless so i just paired my buffet table with two lamps and some vintage finds. I have an ironstone pitcher, which again, just kind of ties in that vintage feel as well as some ironstone plates and a plate rack. Once I got the dining room table and the buffet in the space, I started thinking that something was maybe missing. There was a lot going on on the buffet side of my dining room and the right side was rather bare. <laughs> and so I came up with the idea of a corner hutch and I thought that was the perfect win-win. I could have my buffet while still having a hutch that I could decorate and style and sort of give that eclectic vintage feel. I did find a corner hutch on Facebook Marketplace and I just have it decorated with assorted white pictures and some wood elements. I have um, some wood utensils and a rolling pin and I just love the whites and the wood tones together. As far as textiles go, I don't have a rug under the table right now. It's just not 
very practical with little ones. They spill all the time and I felt like I was constantly cleaning the rug. Um, but maybe someday down the road soon I'll find the right one that might work for the space. Um, but I do have some woven shades, some woven blinds, and some beautiful drop cloth curtains that are just perfect for the space. I find that they're very airy, but really add a level of depth and dimension, and they just create a warm, cozy atmosphere. At first, I wasn't going to put them up because I wanted as much natural light as possible, but once I had them up, it just tied the whole room together. I'm someone that loves to decorate with fresh greenery and florals, and I find that it just makes a space really airy and soft, but at the same time gives a ton of life and texture to a room. Now, the last little nook of this dining room that I wanna talk about, I've talked about the buffet and then the corner hutch, but there is one other corner that actually has a entrance to the house. It is off of the front porch into the dining. And that was very common in this era of home. And so I wanted to create this sort of eclectic, sort of vintagey, but not too cluttered, sort of cozy cottage, sort of fresh entryway feel. So I've placed um, a wood accordion peg rail, and I've been able to put like my tote and apron and some fun pieces on that that sort of give the illusion of an entryway. I have my watering can sitting there. It's easy to bring it in and out of the house if I want to water some plants or water some indoor plants. And it's just a really cozy corner of the house. It's come to be one of my favorite spots. I found this vintage um, high chair a while back. It's just painted in like a light gray color and I actually use it as a plant stand. I have a maiden's hair fern sitting on it right now. I sort of change that up from time to time, but I am a sucker for old vintage plates and dishware and I've been very into the Tonquin style blue vintage dinner plates and I've been collecting them. I have one or two of them on that corner hutch, but then I knew I really wanted to hang some on the wall. I think that plates are a great use of wall decor in a dining space or in a kitchen. It's just a really fun way to add more pattern and more texture to a room. So when it came time to hang them, I started kind of placing them on the table just to get a feel for the layout of where I wanted to put them and realized I didn't want to do all blue dinner plates. That was a little bit too much. So I just broke it up with some white ironstone plates. And I think the combination of the blue plates and the white plates is really pretty. Overall, I think that this room has really come together. I love having the open concept kitchen into the dining, and I love how we've been able to add so much natural light. Natural light is your best friend when it comes to decorating a space, and just getting that sunshine in alone is just a breath of fresh air. And I sort of love the mix of the vintage and the modern pieces. I love the curtains with the textile, and those wicker dining chairs are also one of my favorite pieces as well. But if you like what you saw today, be sure to hit the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you join my YouTube family. And be sure to leave a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know what your favorite piece was or area. I always find it so fun and interesting to hear what you guys have to think. But I hope you all have an amazing week and I'll see you guys really soon in the next one. Bye.